everybody. Welcome back to the movie trivia showdown. It's the semifinals. It is the team's tournament, and this is the one to find out who is going to face King Arthur in the finals for the tournament. Will it be the press room, the team of Perry Nemiroff and Josh Horowitz, or will it be the dream team that was put together in the beginning of the season that already won a tournament this year, and that is the team of Danger Zone, two former champions, the greatest of all time, Dan Merle, and the boss, Ben Bateman, together again in this tournament. This is some kind of matchup. Mark Ellis. It's going to be a fun one, Christian. You and I used to compete in this thousands and thousands of eons ago, but now we have two prime teams ready to make their mark and possibly claim a belt. In order to do that, you got to get to the finals. In order to get to the finals, you're going to have to beat an opponent who has had an amazing run in this titles tournament. I mean, it's it's a team's tournament, and they're playing for a title of sorts, but they really want to get to the Schmodown spectacular and the road to do that well you're gonna have a major block in there whether you're talking about the press room or danger zone like you said we know danger zone we know who they're comprised of we know ben the boss bateman and dangerous dan Merle. they've been doing it great for so long scary perry nemiroff and josh the carpathian horowitz all of a sudden have a lot to prove because they want to show that no we can be one of the elite teams and Josh Horowitz has been a great competitor all year long he's a rookie didn't have his best showing at the live event in Brooklyn can he rebound alongside Scary Perry and can they defeat a team who I would have to say most of the fans watching probably think Danger Zone can take this and just to that I'd say possibly but not so fast press room has shown us an awful lot this season they really have and answer your question josh bounced back and they won that they won their first round matchup to get to where they are right now and it is it really is perry nemiroff when she is on fire and when she is playing well this is to steal her moniker a scary team because First of all, it's really funny that we're in this position because Ben Bateman and, and, and Dan Merle, in order to get here, they had to take out Paige for Betty and Drew McQueenie. And obviously, Ben was trying to avenge that loss uh, in the singles tournament. And it might be the opposite here, where Perry Nemiroff and Ben Bateman, they went to sudden death in their first round matchup together. Perry, Perry is no stranger to pulling off upsets. She's done it before in the tournament. She almost did it to Ben Bateman. But Josh Horowitz now out to prove that he wants to bounce back he wants to get to the spectacular and guess what he also will get to do if he wins here today he'll try to get some revenge on griffey nooms should he win here today so there's a lot on the table and you look at ben bateman and dan merle these two guys they put together this team everything and ben bateman and dan said it from the second they joined everything except winning the championship will be considered a failure they know that they understand that they know they they have to get to those titles that's what they want to do that's what they've talked about why else it was a business partnership more than anything else they're not the best of friends but they work together very well and they've won a tournament already can they do it again can they get to the finals ben bateman has already won a team's tournament twice ben bateman has already won a singles tournament uh before Dan Merle has not won um, a singles tournament, but obviously won the one with Ben earlier this year. In their first like two matches that they played together, um, Perry was struggling a little bit, and Josh had to carry a little bit more. Not in that last match. In that last match, Perry was right there helping out and getting some of those big pulls in that second round. And if, that, if they start working together, that's a team that could be holding the goal by the end of the season. Yeah, there's a whole lot of storylines here that we're going to be watching and keeping an eye on throughout the match. And then obviously the winner has another mountain to climb in King Arthur. So it's like one of those Marvel Captain Batman Skywalker movies you love so much where there's just all these different plot points interweaving eventually. It's about to go down right now. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown. Introducing first. Representing the Quirky Mercs with a record of two wins, one defeat, Scary Perry Nemiroff and the Carpathian Josh Horowitz, the Press Room. 
There they are, Mark. It is the Carpathian and Scary Perry looking to pull up a big win here and get themselves into the finals. And their opponents representing the Dungeon with a record of four wins, two defeats. He is the former movie trivia schmodown champion of the world, Ben the Boss Bateman, and the former movie trivia schmodown team's champion, and the former five-time movie trivia schmodown champion of the world, Dangerous Dan Morrow. This is the Danger Zone! There is Merle, and there is Bateman. Can they do it? Can they make it to the finals? We find out in just a moment. It is Danger Zone versus Press Room. All right, Mark, our competitors are here. Press Room and Danger Zone, what are the rules of round number one? So much talent and good looks on display, and I'm just talking about my box. In round number one, it is the team's matchup, and it will be an individual test of movie trivia, Schmodown know-how. Each question is asked to the field. You may not rely on your teammates' ability to get a correct answer in round number one. Once we ask the question, simply write down your best attempt at an answer on whatever writing surface you prefer. You have 15 seconds to do so. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote at the same time you verbalize your attempt into the microphone. Each question is worth one point per competitor. No penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. We do give you three repeats. You may use those as a team throughout the match. That's called the JTE rule. You're not sure you heard a question right. You just want to buy yourself another 15 seconds. Use a JTE rule. Again, you only have three of those to use as a team. You can also just say repeat the question. Each team also has one challenge you may utilize at any point throughout the three-round match. We'll bring in managers. We'll deliberate. It will be your manager that confirms and ratifies if said challenge is taking place. So, Christian, they looked locked. They looked loaded, but we should probably get confirmation. Josh, are you ready? Yeah. Perry, are you ready? That I am. Dan, are you ready? Always ready. Bateman, are you ready? Kidding, Christian, I'm freaking pumped. I even brought a cake. I'm eating this as soon as I beat you guys. Then let's get ready to schmodown. Round number one. Question number one. We're going to start with fantasy sci-fi. Rosa Salazar plays the title character in what 2019 sci-fi action film? Off and running. I don't know. You know, sometimes you didn't get that spidey sense, and you just feel like this is going to be a really good match. And we go to five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's start with you, Dangerous Dan. Uh, Alita Battle Angel. That's it. And Perry. Alita Battle Angel. And Ben Bateman. Alita Battle Angel. And Josh. I have Battle Angel Alita. Cannot accept okay. Battle Angel Alita. All right, so... Right now, Josh misses. Everybody else at the moment hits it. It's 2-1 with Danger Zone 2-1. And here is your next question. It's in the category of Westerns. And here we go for a point. Clint Eastwood plays a mysterious preacher who protects a prospector village from a greedy mining company in this 1980s Western. All right, so right now, Danger Zone with a one-point lead. Getting first blood. Go to Western. And five. Give me four. Three. Two. One. Pens down. Hands up, please. And start with Perry. Westerns is not my best category. I've got nothing. Uh Ben Bateman. High Plains Drifter. Incorrect. Uh Josh. Pale Rider. Yes. And Dan Merle. Pale Rider. Yes. So only Dan Merle has not missed so far. All right, so now we will move on over to question three, the 2010s. Matt Reeves directed Chloe Grace Moretz, Elias Coteas, and Richard Jenkins in this 2010 horror film. 
2010s, more like 2000 intense. Am I right? Wow, I like what you're doing there, Mark. I don't, I don't mind that pun. Uh, it's, it's called bringing color and personality to the match, Christian. I like it. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down, hands up, please. And we're going to start with Ben Bateman. Let me in. Yes, Josh. Let me in. Dan. Let me in. And Perry. Let me in. They all got it. And at the moment, still one point game here. It is 5-4. Danger zone up by one as we get to the next question. Yeah, they all sounding like Kaiser wanting to get in the stream so bad. Your next question is in the category of movie release dates. And here it is. For a point, what year saw the release of the franchise films Hannibal Rising, Live Free or Die Hard, and Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End? Woo! Those are good ones. I like are they, they all, though? Well, I mean, the, the question. The question's good. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down. Hands up, please. We're going to start with Josh. I went with 2007. You got it correct. Dan Merle. 2007. Yep. Perry. Or 2012. And Ben. 2007. All right. So Danger Zone takes another lead, two point lead here at a 7 5 at the moment. And we get to our next question. This is question number five horror slash thriller. Who directed Kevin Bacon, Kelly Preston, and John Goodman in the revenge thriller Death Sentence? I kind of want to. I, I've never heard of it. I want to. I want to see it now. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down. Hands up, please. And we're going to start here with Dan Merle. This isn't the answer. I just wanted to make sure I never got a question wrong again. I just wrote Joe Dante. <laughs> <laughs> it's not correct, but thank you for answering. Perry. James Wan. Yes. Uh, ben. Didn't have that one. And Josh. Mark, you don't need to see it. It's James Wan. Wow, look at that. They tie up the game there because both Danger Zone miss it, and that is unbelievable there because we're tied up. And now we get to question number six. All right, then let's just get out of horror movies entirely and go to comedies. <laughs> ah. And for a point, here it is. Carrie Elway's Lloyd Bridges, Ryan Stiles, and Charlie Sheen appear in what 1991 American comedy flick directed by Jim Abrahams? Abrams. Well, that's fine. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. Can I you still know, go get ice cream? Yeah, it's fine. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down. Hands up. Perry Nemiro. I don't know. Princess Bride? It's incorrect. Dan? Hot shots. Sorry about that, Ben, ben but that's okay. Ben? Hot shots. Yeah. And Josh? Hot shots. That's correct. Uh, my bad. All right. So there we go. It is now a one-point lead by Danger Zone. And now we get to question seven. Directors. How many films did James Cameron direct during the 1990s? And you and I get to continue our celebration of the great 1991 classic Hot Shots. So good. It's just so perfect. So underrated. I remember just being in my place watching that with you laughing our faces off. Five, four. Three, two, one. Ben's down. Yep. And this time we're going to start with Ben. Three. That is correct. Josh. Three. Yep. Dan. Three. And Perry. I put four. All right. So Danger Zone takes their two-point lead again. And then we get to our last question in this round. No perfect rounds on the table at the moment. It's the last category, Mark. What do we got? We have famous actors and actresses. They're doing well, and their bank accounts reflect that. Here is your question for a point. Which actor appeared in the 1980s films Parenthood, Spaceballs, and Streets of Fire? 
on question closing it out here good competitive ball game thus far five four three two could you repeat the question please yep first one first one and that is in the category famous actors and actresses which actor appeared in the 1980s films parenthood Spaceballs and streets of fire so if one JT will down for danger zone, they currently enjoy a two point lead. Final question, no chance for a perfect round for anyone. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down. And here we go with the reveals. We start with Josh. Now with Rick Moranis? Correct. Dan. I said Bill Pullman. Uh, Perry. I said Rick Moranis. And Ben. Yeah, I wrote Rick Moranis. Awesome, Ben gets it, but it keeps their one-point lead here. One-point lead. What a first round that was. 12-11, one point separates them going into round number two. Danger zone up by one. It is the wheel round, Mark. What do we got? Extra, extra. It's competitive here at the Schmodown, and now in round number two, it's the wheel round. The wheel of fate, doom, and justice emerges. Each team gets a spin at that thar wheel once you settle on a category six Yes, six questions will emerge from that particular realm. Each question is worth two points. There's no penalty for missing a question. Here's the good news. The teams may confer amongst the members for each and every question. We do ask that once you settle on an answer, you just let us know that it is your final answer. And now for that bad news, stealing is available in round number two. If you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question recedes to one. Please keep in mind, we do need to see hands at all times once you begin the questioning and just because steal opportunities are in play whatever team is not currently fielding questions they will be in an opposite stream where they cannot hear or see any of the questions being asked steal opportunities will be presented upon completion of each round two. all right so because danger zone has a one point lead at the moment gentlemen you have the opportunity to go first or second what do you choose and i think we stick with the game plan what do you think well, I mess with a good thing. We will uh, defer to our esteemed opponents. All right, defer it is. We're going to drop you guys out, and press room will spin first. I also like that we're going first because I love this whole wheel for us. All right, so here's the spin here, and whatever they land. Yeah, I and see a movie there. Oh, Perry likes that's the spin they probably want. That's the spinner's choice. All right, so 60 seconds to decide, and we're going to ask Danger Zone to stick around until you choose. All right, 60 seconds. So, so we know what we discussed, Josh. I think I leave it yep. to you. We know the two we're narrowing it down to. I think you make the call between the two of them. I think we, we, we play as a team and we know combined forces. We can do well with this in the past, present and future. It's appropriate to pick new releases. Coy, what do you think? Yes. I think it's the one they are going to have the most trouble with if a steal happens, which is not going to. You guys know this stuff like the back of your hand. It is a very hard category, but you're very good players. This is exactly what we want. Go in with confidence. Remember, JTE, check down if you need to. Use context clues. Remember the junkets. Remember playing back. Remember when you saw it in theaters. And remember if you saw it early, if there's a year transition. It's unlikely, but play every single fact back. Think of the cover. Think of the poster. Think of the cast. Right. Think of the interviews. Hold on. Right. Josh, you don't want to go with the other one before we lock this in. I'm good with it. Okay, let's stick with it. Perry, Perry this is the right, one. New releases it is. Okay. All right, Mark. So now it is time for the press room to get their questions. Here we go. Five questions, excuse me, six questions. And here's your first. Which actor plays Simon? who is the leader of an elite group of assassins in the film, Ava. Uh, that's Jessica Chastain. Oh, uh, no, she's Ava, so that's not her. Oh, yeah. So it's is the it Jessica Colin, Chastain movie, I could tell you that. Colin Farrell, then? I'm not 100% sure. Do we repeat want to repeat? Or, or repeat. Repeat. Okay. One repeat, here it is. So he's the only other, like, Which actor? major Wait, actor. Plays Malkovich is also the uh, leader of an elite group of how assassins. How confident do you feel? Because I never saw the movie. Ava. 15 seconds. Do we go down to multiple just to hedge our bets, or do we... Do you feel confident in Colin Farrell versus Malkovich? Five. Let's do Four. final, Colin. Colin Three. Farrell, final answer. That is correct. Two points. 
All right, here is question two. Which 2021 animated film follows a friendship that grows between a human being and a sea monster disguised as a human on the Italian river? Riviera, excuse me. Luca, Luca. Right? yeah. Luca, final answer. That's two points. All right, here is... Which actor plays the time-traveling robot Dennis in Bill and Ted Face the Music? Oh, oh um, it's the guy from um, uh, Barry. Um, uh, 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 Bill Hader, the bald guy? Yeah, the bald guy. Uh, Damn, I don't remember his name. Uh, I should remember his name. I love him and uh, Barry. Uh, oh, yeah, there's multiple. Uh, Four. Should we repeat? Three? No, Two. multiple. Let's do multiple. Okay. Multiple choice. I'll Four. know his name if I hear it multiple. Yeah, Is it A, Beck Bennett? B, Anthony Carrigan? C, Nathan Head? D, Kyle Mooney? I, it wouldn't have come to me, so don't yeah. worry about it. Let's let's do a B, final answer. For one point. All right, that was question three. Here is question four. Here we go. What is the subtitle for the third film in the Conjuring franchise? The Devil Made Me Do It. Nice. Yep. Final answer. Two more points. All right. Here is the fifth question. Actor Ludi Lin plays which character in the 2021 film Mortal Kombat? Uh, I, I know this. I can get this. Can you name some Mortal Kombat characters? Uh, no, not really. Uh, oh my god, uh, I should be able to get this. Fine. Multiple, multiple or not, not Kung Lao, Three, but... Two. Repeat. Repeat, repeat the question. All right, here it is. Not Kung Lao, but... Then, so actor Ludi Lin plays which character in the 2021 film Mortal Kombat? Second one by Five, four, three. Okay. Uh, multiple. multiple choice. Multiple choice, it's okay. All right. Damn. Is it? It's okay. Kano. No. Okay. B, Cole Young. C, Liu Kang. D, Kung Lao. It's Liu Kang. Final answer. Great. For one point. All good. Great. So now so here, here is the question. Here is the final question, excuse me, in this round. Which actor plays the character of Mr. Stringer, the manager of a seaside hotel in the 2020 film, The Witches? Uh, Stanley, Stanley Pucci. Pucci. Yeah. Final answer. Yeah. Two more points. So press room, they get all of their questions right. They go to multiple choice twice, but it still gives them a sizable lead here. It is 21-12 with no steal opportunities as they await danger zone. And Mark, so... I get it. After the next spin. And here is the spin. And we're looking at disaster films. Disaster. Mm. Oh, that looks right on the line, pal. You might want to give that another whirl. <laughs> disaster films. Right on the line. 60 seconds. Disaster films. And That's now, not on the line? If it's on the line, even if it is, it isn't. But even if it is, it goes to the right. It's been the rule since the beginning. In the famous so, words of John McEnroe, that's on the line. Congratulations. Yeah, that's that's right. All right, you're saying it's uh, on the line? Watch this. It's on the line. So you go to the right. Disaster films. 60 seconds. Hey, okay. Uh, we talked about this, Ben. I think that we are comfortable with disaster, but we love. We, it's a love fest with this wheel. I think we all love this wheel. So, you want to like give it another go? Wheel. Yeah, I really, I'm really happy to get any slice. So yeah. I think we just spin again. Yeah, let's try it again. All right, spin by Danger Zone. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Ben. Here's I, the spin. I really, I really did not know that was a rule, Christian. I'm not trying to get under your skin. Yeah, it's it's. it's right. been, if I, I was trying to there. get under your skin, you'd know it. All right, congratulations. Well, you got the disaster. Oh. Right back to disaster film. No, that's hey. that's on the left. That's absolutely on the left. Relax. Yeah. Calm down. Well, that see. is Tyler Perry movies. Right. Um, that could I be a disaster for me. Let's see. I, I know. Well, look, man, we did it for a reason, right? So yeah, just let me. True. Let's do the way we do it, and yeah, take the wheel. Take care of business, boys. I want to win this thing. All right, Mark. So now, danger zone. Six questions. Tyler Perry. That is the category that you spun on your respin. Spun away from disaster films, got Tyler Perry. Two points apiece for all six questions. Remember, we do need to see hands, and please say it is your final answer. Kicking off with this one, 
Perry directs the actresses Tiffany Haddish, Whoopi Goldberg, and Tika Sumter in which 2018 romantic comedy? Dan, I believe this is Nobody's Fool. I've actually seen this one. You're right. It is Nobody's <laughs> Fool. <laughs> that makes one of us. Uh, nobody's Fool, final answer. I thought that was a Paul Newman film, but that is correct for two points. And Danger Zone is on the board, cutting the lead to seven. Here's your next question in the category of Tyler Perry films. Here it is. What sitcom star plays Cheryl in 2008, Meet the Browns? Sitcom star plays Cheryl and Meet the Browns. Check. Hmm. Cheryl and Meet the Browns, sitcom star. Five. Four. Multiple or repeat? I think, let's Two. go multiple. Multiple One. choice. All right, multiple okay. choice. Multiple choice it is. Here's your four options for a point. Is it A, Sofia Vergara? B, Julie Bowen. C, Anna Ferris. D, Stephanie Beatrice. Well, I know that Sofia Vergara, I believe, is in a couple of Tyler Perry movies, so my instinct leads me that way. Okay. I guess I remember a later one, but that's I don't have a better answer, well, so let's go yeah. with it. Three. Sofia Vergara, final answer. Your final answer is correct. For a point, they go to multiple choice, and they pick up the point, so they move on to the third question. Once again, the category is Tyler Perry movies. Here it is. Perry voices Cyrus the Camel in what 2017 animated film? Dan, this is the star, I believe. I believe you're correct. Yes. The animated one, right? Yeah, that's animated. The star. Yeah. The star, final answer. A star, a star shining in the sky. That is correct for two more points. It's a four-point ball game, and Danger Zone has three questions remaining in this round and so they could pick up some points and possibly the lead heading into round number three your fourth question in the category of tyler perry films which popular comedian plays the character buddy williams in a medea christmas is this larry the cable guy Dan? Well, that sounds like an intersection of horribleness. Um, I think if that's what your gut instinct says, then go Five, for it. Yes. Four. Three. Larry the Cable Guy, final two. answer. Also, we accepted Dan Whitney. That is correct. <laughs> for two more points, it's a two-point ball game. And Christian, they hit one of the stars of the Blue Collar Comedy Tour in a Tyra Perry category. Anything is possible now with their penultimate question that could tie the lead of press room. The category, Tyler Perry films the question. Dwayne The Rock Johnson has a cameo in which Tyler Perry directed sequel? One of the boo, is it like a boo movie? Is it I boo? think it. I think it might be Why Did I Get Married 2? I just you're remember looking correct. at The Rock He's... Slice and I think he had a cameo in that. I yeah. think you're right, yeah. yeah. Four. Why Did I Get Four. Married 2? Final answer. Spelled like Teen Wolf 2. Christian, they really like this respin that they did. It settled on Tyler Perry, and now it settles on a tie at 21 between Danger Zone and Press Room. One question remains in this round for the zone that gets dangerous. Here is your final question. For two more points, which Tyler Perry film revolves around April? A self-centered alcoholic singer taking care of her nieces, Jennifer, Maddie, and Byron. This is I Can Do Bad All By Myself. If you say so. That is the exact title of the film I'm thinking of, right? I Can Do Bad All By Myself. I know there's one called that, so yes. yes. I Can Do Bad All By Myself. Final answer. I just like hearing Ben Bateman say that <laughs> phrase over and over again. That is correct for two wow. more points. Bad for, boss. Two point lead for Danger Zone after an impressive round number two. Both squads playing well. It's a two-point lead that the press room is looking up at, owned by Danger Zone as we head into round three. All right, so after that round, at the moment, it is 23-21, Danger Zone. No steal opportunities on that side. And now, Mark, we get to round number three. It's the final round. How does it go? I would figure you would know how it works by now, Christian. We're eight seasons into this. But you. here's the rules, just in case anyone forgot. Round number three, the team format works as thus. Each team is going to give us a series of numbers. We need three numbers from each squad. They may range from one to 20. You may not pick the same normals as your opponents, as each integer corresponds to a unique category of Schmodown mystery. Now, some of this works the same way as in the singles bracket. Two-pointer, 
three-pointer and a five-pointer question. Here's where the team format gets tricky, is that once we give the team the category for the two-pointer, the team must select which member is going to field that query solo. You may not rely on the strength of your teammate to answer the two-pointer, and then the three-pointer will be asked to the opposite team member, who, again, may not consult with their teammate. You may only confer with your teammate for the five-point question. And now we get to the numbers. This is always fun and light. Danger zone, three numbers from one to 20. What feels fortunate? What do you think, Why don't you take two, boss, and then I'll take one. Let's go 17, seven. And four. 17, seven, and four for danger zone and for press room. You can bet what I'm gonna pick, Josh. Number three. 18. One. Three, 18, and one for the press room. All right, so Mark, we're going to start with the press room. They are down at the moment by two points, so they will be going first with their two-point question. They chose to start. They chose category number three, remakes and reboots. We love them because we keep paying money to see them. Here we go for two points, and to tie the lead, who wants to take that question? Is it going to be Scary Perry or the Carpathian, Josh Horowitz? What do you it, think? It, it feels it feels like an easier question should go to me in this case. It's not it's not a category I'm like running from, but yeah. it's big and broad, so you never know. Yeah, I, th I think you'll I think you'll get it. I know you'll get it. Take it. All right, All I'll right. take and it. Perry Nemiroff will be fielding the question, and here it is for two points and the tie. What actor took over the role of Scotty in 2009's Star Trek? Simon Pegg. For two points. You got a tie ball game. And it bounces back to Danger Zone now. And they chose category 17, Mark. That would be in the category of new releases. New releases. A familiar category from round mm -hmm. two for the other team and now Danger Zone. Who would like to take that? Is it going to be Dangerous Dan Merle or Ben mm -hmm. the Boss Bateman? I feel pretty good about a uh, two point new release, Dan. Grab it. Yeah. All right. I'm in Siberia. The they don't send me screenings anymore, so you should take it. <laughs> Sir Bateman, here's your question. The category of new releases for two points and to enjoy, once again, a two-point lead. Bob Odenkirk stars as Hutch Mansell, a former government assassin for the CIA, in what 2021 action film? Nobody. Watched it on a plane last week. Thoroughly enjoyed it. That is correct for two points. And Danger Zone is up by two, so we go back to press room for their three-pointer. They could have the lead at the end of this. All right, so now we get to three-point question. They chose PR, uh, excuse me, press room, that is. Chose category 18, the 2010s. 2010s, it's three points for the Carpathian. All right, this is to the Carpathian in the category of the 2010s, a decade in which I believe saw him live in New York City. Here we go. For your three-pointer, for the lead, here it is. Who plays Master Sergeant Farrell, the head of J-Squad, in Edge of Tomorrow? Five, four, three. Repeat the question. That's the last one. All right, and your question, 2010s is the category. Who plays Master Sergeant Farrell, the head of J-Squad, in Edge of Tomorrow? Five, four. Bill Paxton, final answer. He got there, Christian. You got there, use FJTE, and wow, you can feel it in the air. It's 26 25. It bounces back down to Dan Merle, and Dan Merle for his three point question. He chose category seven, which gives him the realm of black cinema. All right, Dan. Three points. Is the question value? If you hit this, going to force a whole lot of pressure on press room here 
is your three-pointer. To regain the lead, Albert and Alan Hughes direct to Lorenz Tate, Keith David, and Chris Tucker in this 1995 drama that chronicles the life of a character named Anthony Curtis. Five. Above the rim. That is incorrect. We're looking for dead presidents. And so, Christian, we're going to stick with Danger Zone. They now have a five-pointer. They got to have or else Press Room is going to advance in this tournament. That's right. So, at the moment where we are, Danger Zone needs to hit their five. If they hit it, they bounce back to the Press Room, who's got to hit their five in order to win. But... As you said, Mark, if they miss, then the press room goes on to play in the finals of the tournament. They chose category four, and that gives them the 1990s, the 1990s, Mark. 1990s, right? A few dozen films released during that decade. Your question is going to be about one of them. Reminder to both the boss and Dangerous Dan, you may confer with each other for this question. We just want you to to let us know when it is your final answer. And here it is. In the category of the 90s, what 1990s comedic drama features supporting performances by Laura Linney, Natasha McElhone, Paul Giamatti, and Noah Emmerich? I believe this is the Truman Show, Dan. It's 100% the Truman Show. I can match every one of those to a character. Yes. We're 100%, right? We're not mixing 100%. something up. use repeat just to double it? Nope, nope. it's 100% cool. the Truman, the Truman Show. Truman Show, final answer. They seem confident for a reason. It's correct for five points. Did you expect anything less? Danger Zone 30, the Press Room 26. But the good news for the Press Room, Christian, they now have their five-pointer. What a crazy, crazy match it has been. They do have their five-pointer, but now they are in the position where they can win the game should they hit it. If they hit it, they go on to the finals. If they miss it, then Danger Zone will go on. They have no repeats. The category mark is category one, Westerns. Western films it is. For five points and the win over Danger Zone, a team comprised of two former champs. Now your question to press room. Reminder, you can confer with each other. We do want you to let us know when is your final answer. For five points in the win, Joe Johnston directed what Western adventure film that follows a 3,000-mile horse race called The Ocean of Fire? You know it. Okay. okay. Hidalgo, final answer. And your advancing to the finals, the press room. What a victory it was. It's coming from behind, coming from behind, and they were going into this round. And it was just that one movie. It was Dead Presidents. Dead Presidents was the ability for them to make it on to the finals press room, going on to face King Arthur. And we have ourselves our final congratulations. We will see you guys in just a moment. Wow. Upset City, as Andres Cabrera says, and what an absolute come from behind victory this was. And Danger Zone played real. I mean, they looked phenomenal. Danger Zone looked phenomenal throughout yeah. this entire thing. It's one question. It was a dead president. Dan just at that particular one, he didn't have that one. And Carpathian came back because he looked a little shaky in that round one, but came back and both he and Perry played wonderfully together. And now Josh Horowitz has a little bit of chance of revenge as he gets to face Griffey Nooms one more time, this time in the finals of the team's tournament. Perry Nemiroff making it to her first finals in Schmodown history. A historic day. Here it is, Mark. What a battle and what a victory for the Mercs and Press Room. 
And it's funny you mention Upset City, courtesy of our dear friend Andres Ace Cabrera, his favorite NBA team, the Phoenix Suns. This squad of press rooms started to remind me of their run last year because you have Josh Horwitz, who, like we said at the top, just trying to get his groove back after a disappointment on stage in Brooklyn. Boy, has he done that in this tournament, but he hasn't done it alone. Scary Perry Nemiroff and him forming such a formidable duo, playing off each other great, talking out each question, exhausting their JTE rules when they needed them. They know how to play this game. The strategy was locked in. You could say the same for Danger Zone, Easily. and it's just that one question in round three. We expect Dangerous Dan and Ben the Boss to hit every question they're faced, regardless of what category it is. Both played very well in round one and round two, but it is the press room who now get to be in the winner's circle, joined by the wonderful Steph Sabra for a post-match interview alongside their very excited manager, Koi Jandra of the Quirky Merc. Steph, I imagine it's a celebratory mood, even though it's not the end of this tournament for them. Congratulations, you three. That was such a, Mark said it from the beginning. I think this is gonna be a fun match. And that's exactly what it was all the way till the very end. Perry, I wanna start with you because you faced off with Ben Bateman earlier in the season. And we spoke about how this might be a redemption in some sort. How are you feeling about this win? It feels really good to have actually been able to see this through and get a win against him in the same hat. Now this hat is firmly lucky and will be worn at the next match. But wow, after like so many years playing this game, I can't believe I'm finally going to a championship round and I've got my partner to thank for that. It just feels so good to be working as a team, like just in general, but to keep it going through this match now. Yeah, y'all have and a really And specifically with cool... Westerns. Yeah, I know. Perry said in the beginning, Westerns was not her thing. <laughs> and Josh totally took that in the last with the Hidalgo poll. And I, Perry, you mentioned the teamwork with you and Josh. It was really fun to watch you play off each other. You started off the season with a loss. Now you're three and one. Josh, how has it been throughout the season working with Perry to get to this moment? It's It's been like this kind of just trajectory for us. It truly has. And like, we're, we are just like right now, just in the zone. This is the sweetest win as a teams, uh, teams for us. And for me, just the perspective, like of all the matches I've done, I'm so proud of what we did. We just really complement each other so well. And this clearly was such a formidable, legendary kind of duo we were going up against. And the fact that we proved ourselves against the best feels great. Feels great. Yeah, you really did. Perry, you're one match away from a title match, but obviously you had to get through this match. And you were coming from behind round two, round into round three, and you had to hit that five pointer. At any point, were you feeling nervous or were you just taking question by question with Josh? I mean, the second they said Westerns for that five-pointer, I got real nervous, <laughs> but I, tr I trust uh, Josh over there. So the nerves were cut down a little there. Yeah, it would have been nice to have like one JTE uh, left, but uh, that was a, that was a bit uh, intense. But as soon as halfway through the question, I, I had it. So that was a relief, yeah. And interestingly enough, on the flip side for you, Josh, you faced Newman before in the singles, and now you're gonna face him again. How are you feeling about that face up? I, it's, I'm so looking forward to it. Fantastic. I mean, I, I, I have, you know, I, I want to prove myself against a, a Griffin. I know I have what it takes to take him down and I know now I have the backup to help me out in a pinch with Perry. So, uh, yeah, I'm thrilled about this match and I'm beyond thrilled who we're facing next. This is perfect. Couldn't have written it better. Cool. I feel like you really could never written it better. Koi, this is the Quirky Merc story. I feel like unfolding in Quirky Merc fashion. You have two players that have a chance at redemption. Perry got hers, Josh next. How does it feel to be managing this squad? So we are the underdogs always. And we always come out. It's the story you want to see. It's the Cinderella story. It's the Rocky story. We play from this position of question by question, match by match, intelligence by intelligence. And then at the end of the season, we get gifted with Perry getting to take down Ben. We're gonna get gifted with Josh getting to take down Nooms. And we got to do it with the Western question while we also got to utilize all of our JTEs and dropping down a multiple choice, which were two things we had struggled with before. Sometimes all of my guys, they get in a zone, they get a little overconfident or underconfident. And in this case, they played the game as well as they knew the knowledge. Perry needs to know how good she is. Josh needs to know how good he is and that he knows tactics as well as knowledge. And this match showed both of them 
that they're the people I drafted for a reason while being on our revenge tour. I can be all happy-go-lucky all season all I want. Now that we're at the end of the season, I can smell the gold. It's going to be a little bit different. I can feel the pressure. I can feel how much I want it. I want all of the belts. I want these guys to face Shazam. I want to see the messiest possible teams match where I have to be four people. Bring that problem on because Josh is going to beat Nooms. Perry's going to know how good she is and I'm going to have a conflict of interest. <laughs> a conflict of interest makes it super spicy for the rest of us. I will definitely be here for that, but you brought it up already with Shazam. It, do you plan on having a five round exhibition match to prep with, with the press room? Oh, I look forward to it. And you know what's great about is these four people are so honorable that it's gonna be a truly beautiful match of just goodwill and good intentions. I don't feel like any of these people are gonna be in practice or in, you know, studying, feeling lecherous at the other. That I'd be like, oh, they, they don't know. And it's just, it's not how we play. And and I gotta give credit to two of the best to ever do it. We just played literally two belt wielders and went toe to toe for that long. And that's what I expect these two to do. Unfortunately, we are also the belt owners. So it's gonna be a lot of insanity at the end of this, but five rounds for these guys, I think they're gonna do better because they've only played three rounds so far, but if you notice, they get better each round. What are these guys gonna look like in a five round match if you wake them up in the first? They're gonna be forces of nature. Yeah, I can't wait to see it all go down. Congrats again and good luck in the finals. Christian, Mark, back to you at the desk. You know, Perry Nemiroff joined this league back in 2016, right? She she had taken a break. She had, you know, I had many conversations with Perry about, I don't know, I'm not sure. She's very competitive, as we've seen. Very competitive. If you've ever played uh, beer pong with her, so you, you can attest to that. But she's a very competitive player. And it was just, and I think last year with that big match against Kalinowski, and I again, I spoke to her, her love for it woke up again. And then being paired with Josh Horowitz, who she's known, worked with, done, done stuff with, and their chemistry, it's just working. But that can't take away from the fact that they're playing against the team right now in King Arthur that looks pretty devastating. King Arthur looks awesome right now, but if there's one thing that gets Josh Horowitz and Perry Nemiroff out of bed in the morning more than dominating a great red carpet, it might be competing in a schmodown because like you said, they are all of a sudden on a roll. We pivot over to the Fortune of Danger Zone, who again, just such a tough break. If you get that three point, you, you end up winning the ball game potentially anyway you you wouldn't want to speculate it could have gone that way could have gone that way dangerous dan merle ben the boss bateman two all-time great competitors and I, I even have to say this about their manager i was at the rolling stones with him a couple weeks ago he was on the phone during the stones set with his competitors that's how hard they study that's how well trained they are they just couldn't get the w here today but it was not for a lack of effort they both played spectacularly and now with an understandably disappointed kaiser and his star team danger zone here is once again steph sabra guys i know it was a tough loss everyone keeps saying it two legends and i think that you truly did play well but i want to talk to you each about how you're feeling about it post-match ben we'll start with you it's a disappointment steph you know uh, I think we both knew anything other than a title was going to be a disappointment for this team. It's why we did what we did. And sometimes you miss questions, you know, it's, it's impossible to know the categories you're going to get. It wasn't our best day today. You know, I think we, uh, we left points on the table. We wish we had back and I love playing with this guy. You know, he works as hard as, as anyone I've ever worked with, uh, always puts every miss, every loss on himself never willing to ever let anybody else accept any blame uh holds himself to the highest standard just what you'd expect out of a champion like dan it's a tough way to end the season um you know i think in the dungeon we we this year really all got very close and, and really depended on each other through pretty tough times um and i'm just sad to uh to have to end the season this way dan i mean you know i blew it that's, that's pretty much all there is to it. I mean, there's a reason we talk about, we strategize. There's a reason that based, depending on the category that, you know, a lot of times I'll go into the three point question and that's to close the deal. And I didn't do it today. If I answer that question right, then we win. Yeah, that's, Dan, that's but if you get one more point or I get one more point in round one, we go into sudden death. It's, it's, it's always shoulda, woulda, coulda. It doesn't matter. You know, it's a, you can't blame it on, you can't blame it on yourself. You just can't. 
You've well, played too well. You've played too well in too many matches this season to put it on yourself, and you can't. It's a well, team gonna, At least for right now. Uh, <laughs> no, listen. Um, you know, let's just all that dream team talk, which, by the way, like I call that, we've been getting that all year. I call that straw managing and uh, that they project things onto us and say that we call ourselves things that we didn't call because I can promise you that nobody had higher expectations of this team than we did of ourselves. Uh, and uh, we knew the target that we put on our back by teaming up. And listen, there's no two ways about it. I'm disappointed in the performance of the team this year. I'm disappointed in my performance on this team this year. We should have at least one title to show for it. We should at least have one title match to show for it. And we don't. And it sucks because I've had such a great time playing with this guy this year and being in this faction. And I just feel like I did not play an A game in any of the big matches that we had any time this year. This manager that Mark was just talking about that gives his heart and soul to this game deserves better. My partner deserves better. My faction deserves better. And and I just I feel like I didn't deliver when I needed to deliver on this team this year. Dan, you're uh, known for being hard on yourself, but still truly a legend. Kaiser, I want to hear from you in your perspective as a manager. Watching from my perspective, it seems like these two played their hearts out and did really well. Uh, how are you feeling? It's a long season. Um, you train so many days and hours out of the year and movies come and go. And, you know, you got to be you got to be at your best. And, and sometimes we're all not for various reasons. Uh, I gained two great friends in Ben Bateman and Dan Merle this season, and you can't you can't trade that for a World Series title or, or a Schmodown Teams title. Uh, I, you know, I put a belt on Dan Merle's waist this year. I put a belt on Mara Kanopic's waist this year. What do I got to be sad about? And you know what? I'm going to put another belt on Dan Merle's waist, and I'm going to put a belt on Parker's waist because this team ain't done. And now Ben Bateman, the captain of this team, has to go to work and pick up his partner Dan Merle and get him ready. And that's where we're at. We don't listen. We, we don't die hard. OK, you can call us. Oh, we get shaken and this is the chosen ones and all that BS. But the dungeon fights till the end, till the last question of the season, no matter where we finish. I will put a strap around Dan Merle's waist again, and I'm going to put a strap around Parker's waist again. And guess who's going to be alongside me doing it? Ben Bateman. OK, he's going to be helping me through this time and we're going to pick our ass up. That's what we do. We'll stay down today. You know, we may drink a few Perrier waters or some pops or whatever everyone's got in their fridge. You know what Parker's got in his fridge, Milwaukee's best. But we're going to we're going to pick our ass up and we're going to come back and play. We will be back. Kaiser, you're getting me ready to come back to something I never even entered. But Ben, I know there's a lot to digest from today's match, but what's is there any thoughts on next season? I don't think any of us really have a very clear idea of what next season is going to look like. Um, we knew we sort of had one shot to do this. Um, and like I said, for various in-game and out-of-game reasons, it's been a tough year in a lot of ways. A uh, tough moment now, especially for me. And uh, these are two of the people that have been there to pick me up in that tough moment, um, whether it's trivia or it's 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 real life. And so um, I know that I know that we came into this this team and this faction as business partners, Dan, and that's what this was about when we started. But I I know we're going to be leaving this season as great friends, and that's that's how I feel about it. Um, and that's not going to and whether we're dangerous on next season or not. So uh, a beautiful I feel pretty emotional. I don't know what else to yeah. say about next yeah. season. Yeah, no, I, 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 don't, I, I honestly don't know next season. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it, we don't know what the league's going to look like. And then I just have to take a hard look at the team's division because, I mean, I'm proud, of the, I'm proud of the championship that I won. I'm proud of the defense. But if you look outside of that, this has pretty much just been a litany of um, – loan opportunities for me in this division so well you got one more you know. opportunity and you, and you better take advantage of it pal oh yeah no no, no no i just mean you know teams wise you. i just have to i have to really reassess a lot of stuff but, right. but ben's That's right fine. we don't even know what the what the what the league's gonna look like next year yeah so it's hard to uh, to start making those plans hey yeah. steph truth steph truth be told i am a big fan of perry and her work congratulations to her I did not know anything about her partner, um, the Pomeranian, Barry Horowitz, but Josh he came Horowitz. to play. So, um, you know, best of luck to them moving forward, and uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, God, I tough to pick between who I want to lose more, Gucci or Koi. I kind of 
dislike them both the same, but it should be a knockdown drag out fight. Definitely. Well, boys, I uh, hope to see you soon and I hope you get some rest uh, back to you at the desk, Christian and Mark. Obviously very disappointed, uh, danger zone and, and understood. I mean, this is, I've talked to Ben Bateman off screen many times and he has been adamant he wanted to get back to spectacular he hasn't been there since he won the title in in 2019 he thought that he was he was confident and that he was going to do it and it sure looked like they were going to and it, it just it just didn't happen today it, it, that's it's part of it what i will say is I, I i agree very much so with what um ben bateman was saying i think dan merle puts too much pressure on himself sometimes and too much um emphasis on i mean look at all the stuff that he's done right it's just i think that's probably why he is as good as he is that when he gets down when he when he doesn't do what he wants to do he's really down on himself but what i will say is that would make me scared if i was playing him next in the singles tournament no um, you no. definitely don't want to run into an angry no you don't want to run into a dangerous dan merle period no. nice guy out of the schmodown inside the schmodown you don't want to see him anyway after no. a loss that goes twofold but the other thing that i saw in that interview from both ben and particularly dan was an underrated quality amongst champions accountability they weren't pointing fingers right. at anyone else but themselves. Right. They didn't say, oh, that question was unfair, this or that. They simply said, yeah, we just missed and we should have hit it. And so when you look inward and you say we have things to still work on, that's the mark of a champion. And that's why you see those two fellows who have earned belts in the past and they always remain threats to get strapped again in the future. It's a great point, Mark, because I tell you, the the thing is, like, you always expect anytime Dan Merle gives a post interview, anytime Dan talks, you're like, what a classy answer by by a guy who's held the title so many times, the way that he carries himself. If you've been following Dan Merle, you know that. But someone who doesn't get that in the way that they carry themselves normally in this game, especially this season, is Ben Bateman. That's not the case for what he just said and the way that he just carried himself. He was humble. He was exactly what you said. He was disappointed. And he was classy. Words that you don't necessarily say about the boss. Is it a different side that we will see? Is it a different... I don't know, but it was different. And maybe Dan Merle was rubbing off on Ben Bateman because that's a different Ben Bateman. Who knows? The flash of the boss, maybe it's not working for Bateman at the moment. Maybe he's got to reassess. We'll see because they're right. Season nine is right around the corner. And if you want to see how it's all going to go down, how it's all going to shape up, how the building blocks, the pilot episode, the Schmodown Spectacular, December 4th, downtown los angeles the schmodown live.com we know marisol mckee is going to be there will she be defending that title against dan merle he's got a, a little more to do before we can say that but the tournament's still going on the team's tournament we know the finals the finals are going to be the press room perry nemeroff josh horowitz versus king arthur king Khan, and downtown griffey nooms arthur well, that's only during the match. Right now, it's Griffey News. But anyway, that is a, it's a hell of a match today. It was really a great match. They fought their their hearts out, both teams. And um, and yeah, it was it was something to see. So, Mark, I was glad to call the match with you, my friend. Thank you to our great team over here at Skybound, to our writing team, to everybody. We really appreciate it. And thank you to the teams, to the Mercs, to the Dungeon. See you next time.